Hey y'all, there's a driver. So we are still on ATS, doing another video, like I said before, if you watched the last video. Um, I'm going to try to record this one. I'm probably trying to get one more in um, and stagger them out. So we got a load of live cattle, which is kind of weird, but I'll say that in a minute. Um, we're still in Waco, Texas. We had to go up the street to get this, and we're going to Lawton, Oklahoma. Now, what's interesting about this is that we are at Tractor Supply, and we're going to Tractor Supply with live cattle. Um, not that anything the game did, it's the actual, um, real company mod, um, that I'm currently using, um, that was passed down from a friend of mine. Um, so it just kind of goose it up a little bit. So, um, yeah, it's not a bad drive, guys. Um, let me see here, let me put this back up so you guys can see. So we got like a 285 mile trip, so that won't be too bad. Um, and I also apologize in the last video, um, when I actually did the drive after talking about the weather. The, um, <clears throat> I forgot to turn the audio back on for the game. I had muted the audio for the game. And as you remember, I didn't want to mute the audio that you guys couldn't hear with um, the weather website. Well, that's kind of why, because sometimes I'll forget to turn it back on. So it's just kind of one of those things. So let's work on sneaking out of the parking lot here, because normally you wouldn't have a cattle trailer in this parking lot, but we'll go with it. Kind of weird way it's taking us out of here. I thought that we could have just left the way we came in, but maybe not. Probably a weird ramp or some crap. U-turn to uh, get out of this place. Just it just puts us right on the freeway. That that actually is kind of nice. I actually kind of like that, but a little different to be sure. sure. Glancing on my notes again. Okay, sorry about the uh, moment of silence there. I was trying to get situated and paying attention to the road at the same time. I had looked at my notes and then they got moved, so I had to relocate them. So, um, today's topic is going to be about um, road difficulties um, while on the road. Some of those are weather related and we spoke a fair amount about weather, so I'm going to leave the weather end of it alone. Um, but other road difficulties that I've ran into has been more about um, breakdowns. And we're going to talk a little bit about breakdowns. Um, even in semi trucks, they break down. You've probably see them from time to time on the shoulder of the highway um 
most of the time the truck you see on the shoulder of the highway is because they've had a tire blowout or a small malfunction of some sort. Um, but they do happen. Um, one Probably one of the first breakdowns that I had uh, driving an 18-wheeler was I was, um, I was in Wisconsin, if I remember correctly. I want to say I'd already delivered a load and was heading um, up to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And I was going up there to uh, do stuff for the air show that was just ending. I was going up there to pick up a load coming back to Dallas. And it was around five, six o'clock in the morning. So the sun was just barely coming up. You really couldn't see the road too well. You just drive by your headlights, kind of like you are doing, kind of like what we're doing now. And at the last second, I spotted a two by four laying dead in the middle of my road, uh, my lane actually. And I thought that I um, straddled it. What I mean by straddle is I uh, put um, my tires outside of it and basically ran it in between the truck. Um, I actually did not. It actually caught um, one of my tires. And what it does, it, what it did was it flung the board up. Now, Clean the board up, it didn't really do no damage, except it broke an airline. And the airline it broke was um, along the axle tube of the trailer. It was on the first axle. And there's an airline, actually a couple of airlines right there that run across that axle tube um, that do a variety of things. The thing that that one was doing that it broke was it um, it was my supply line for from my truck, for the air to the air tank and all that stuff. So as soon as it hit that, it it didn't just puncture a hole in it it broke it um it was it, it's a plastic line but it's a hard plastic line so when it breaks it breaks and there's not much you can do about it so um by the time i started to go toward the shoulder it was already locked up the trailer brakes and i left up uh, i left probably a good 30 foot of skid marks going to the shoulder of the road um I contacted the uh, roadside crew um, that the company used. They had somebody on their way to come help me out. Um, I was only on the side of the road for maybe 30 minutes. And actually, I think I might've been on the phone with the uh, the group. I think a guy called them and then they said they called me back. And then when they called me back, I was in the middle of the phone call with them. And I felt my truck move and a state trooper stepped up on the side of the step of my truck and to get my attention. And, oh uh, crap, we're supposed to went that away. Okay, we'll make a flip. So, he was just stopping to check on me, make sure I was okay, because he'd seen the skid marks, and he was wondering what was up. And I explained to him what was up, and that I was on the phone with uh, Roadside, and he said, oh, okay, and so he left me be. So, um, he, um... He went back to his car and I saw him leave while I'm on the phone. I'm like, okay, you know, this guy's just being nice. He checked up on me. <laughs> 30 minutes later, the guy came back, the same officer came by again and stopped. And he's like, hey man, I just wanted to make sure you do actually have help coming. I said, oh, yeah, I got help. And he's like, okay. So <clears throat> I, I thanked him because, you know, I, I've ran into a lot of scenarios with law enforcement and I'm not saying all law enforcement's bad, I, you know, just, I know that they're busy with other things, but that was one of the few times that I ever had law enforcement stop and check on me and make sure I was okay. And I thank the guy for it. I really appreciated it. Um, so I ended up only being on the road for a couple hours. Um, the repair truck that came out, he brought a airline repair kit with him and he fixed it in probably 20 minutes, if that long, and I was back on the road. Um, I learned that if I'd have had one of those repair kits on me, I could have repaired it myself and I'd have been on the road three hours earlier than I was. But that kind of thing just happens and you just kind of deal with it. So that was just one. Um, there was another time I remember in that same truck, actually, I think it was the same truck, but same company. The uh, transmission started to act up in the truck. Um, I was in Arkansas at the time. Um, I was in between Little Rock and Memphis. I'm just cruising along, and this was during that time that I was talking about when truck drivers actually talked on the CV. And it was, uh, I don't know, three or four of us that were running together, and we were chit-chatting back and forth on the radio. And my truck starts to jump out of gear. So it's a manual transmission, 10-speed. 
and uh, the transmission just starts jumping out of 10th gear and I would you know rev the RPM to the right spot and I'd put it back in gear and not even a mile down the road it popped out of gear again I'm like what tarnation's going on here so after it did it the third time I pulled over on the shoulder of the road and I'm like something's going on here I opened the door and it sounded like somebody had put a um, a hand crusher inside my transmission and I'm like oh this ain't good this is not good at all so I called up the same people um, we, we leased our trucks through a certain company so I called them up again and mind you this wasn't the same day this is months uh, they send out a repair guy the guy says no I can't repair that and he goes that transmission's toast but he leaves and next thing you know the, the shop calls me and they're like well we don't believe that guy we're sending another guy out another guy comes out says the exact same thing they ended up sending a total of three people out because they didn't believe the mobile mechanics what it was they didn't want to have to pay to have the truck towed um, towing a truck is, is very expensive um, they charge high mileage rates to tow them and all that stuff so they didn't want to have to pay the tow bill they wanted to just pay a, a repair guy to come out and fix it um, so what it ended up coming down to was the cooler there's um, cooler lines that goes to a cooler that cools the transmission the uh, one of the lines had broke and when it broke it blew all the fluid out of the transmission and I didn't know it um, nobody behind me had told me about it or anything like that so I didn't know anything about it and it ran itself completely out of transmission fluid and then it burned up the inside of the transmission it burned it up to the point it wasn't rebuildable so, um, and like I said, they sent out three mobile repair guys that could not fix it. And then they sent out the tow truck. The tow truck towed me part way. He towed me to a tow yard and wanted me to leave my trailer there. I had to call my company to get confirmation on that. And they approved for me to leave it there. And then I had to go the rest of the way with the tow truck, with the truck to the lease company in Little Rock and get the um I'll get back over here i think i got an exit up here so exit right here what do i do no, i'm tailgating this guy um and then after i got to little rock they gave me another truck and they called it a sublease so it was just a short-term lease until they got my regular truck fixed and uh they uh gave me that truck my company made me go back and get my trailer which makes sense. I mean, I had a load going to Dallas. And uh, so I went back and got it. I thought maybe the truck would be ready over the next couple days. So out of my own stupidity, I went and got a um, hotel room for the weekend and went and chilled out. Monday morning comes around and I got in big trouble with the company because I should have already been in Dallas. So I cruised back to Dallas and delivered my load and everything it took two weeks for them to get a transmission for that truck apparently they couldn't rebuild it because I burned it up that bad that's what they claimed it was that was an interesting fiasco because you know I basically pulled over on the shoulder of the highway mid-afternoon so say two or three o'clock in the afternoon and um resumed here I seen a yellow sign that says something about something and I missed it. So this might be a toll road I can't remember. so anyhow um, it was mid afternoon so like 2, 3, maybe 4 o'clock and yeah this is a toll road um, as when I pulled over and by the time I actually got my truck from the, the sublease truck, it was already after five in the afternoon. By the time I went and got my trailer and came back and went to the truck stop and got something to eat, um, it was already late at night. Okay. So I've never done tolls in this game. So I guess pick a lane, any lane, right? Just keep moving. $4. H.E. Bailey Turnpike, so we are 
Obviously in Oklahoma. So that was one of the longer pain in the butts I had to deal with. Um, I had a couple other breakdowns in vehicles. Um, I blew up the water pump in one of my trucks um, and lost two days at a shop getting waiting on parts and then them installing the parts for me. And then um, another interesting one was with the load that I had. So one company I worked for, we did what we called power only transport. And it's similar to like what we're doing here in ATS, where we're picking up a load, picking up the trailer from a customer and taking it to where they want to go. So what I was picking up was a stack of container chassis. And those, the stack container chassis was five chassis, one on the ground, four stacked on top of it. And then I had to chain them down. And then they put um, what we call dunnage, which is, you know, blocks of wood and things like that as a filler in between them. The reason we did that is because the way they're stacked, the tires can rub. And you don't want that. So they, had, they did their part, and then I chained it all up like I was supposed to, and then I got on the road. Now, when I got on the road, it is rush hour. So I go and take off at rush hour, and I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey has some pretty rough traffic, to be honest. And uh, I take off, and I'm and I'm in traffic, but it wasn't real bad yet. It was right at a, it was almost five o'clock. So I think it was more like four. And I hit a bump, and as soon as I hit a bump, I heard it and felt it. And basically, what I heard was tires rubbing, and um, I felt the truck slow down. I looked in my mirror, and all I can see is tire smoke behind me. And I'm like, what in the sand? So. I pull over, I attempted to pull over, I ended up stopping because it brought me to a complete stop. I jumped out, I looked, sure enough, the dunnage that they'd put in there, the wood blocks, had fell, and it made the tires touch between the two trailers, um, causing it to give me that tire smoke and lock, basically almost locking up the tires. It was just a lot of weight. So what I ended up doing was I ended up switching a few airlines on the fly real quick. I jumped back in the truck, pulled a valve, and was able to release the, all the brakes enough to just at least pull over and get out of the travel lane, at least get on that shoulder. And so I did that. So after doing that, I um, got you know fully got onto the shoulder out of the way, and I called the customer and said, "Hey, you know this was through a broker." I said, hey man, I said, the, the dunnage on this trailer fell, their tires are touching. I said, I had to do something tricky to get off the road, but I'm on the shoulder right now. I told him where I'm at. So he contacts a um, mobile mechanic guy that was gonna come out and work on it and try to fix it for me. Well, the guy refused to come out and do anything because I was on a state highway, because I was on the interstate. So I called the broker back and we go back and forth and long story short, they ended up um, having me call Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol had to call a wrecker out. The wrecker actually ended up picking up the load, replaced the wood um, that was in there so I could rechain it, and I was good to go. But their bill was $2,000. And I told them, I'm not paying for it. This is not my load. I mean, it's, it's my load to haul, but it's not my load to be paying for that. I didn't improperly do that. It was already pre-stacked, so I'm not paying the two thousand dollars for you guys to do what you guys did. Well, then the broker refused to pay for it, so the tow company that came out and fixed all this threatened to take my truck, and I told him there was no way in hell he was taking my truck. Um, the only way he was taking my truck was if he had to kill me first. You know, I mean, I know I was kind of rude about that, but at the same time, if you look at it from my perspective. That truck was my home. That's what I slept in. So, um, they argued back and forth for about 15 minutes. Um, the highway patrol ended up blocking my truck because he thought I was going to run. And after about 30 minutes, the broker finally went ahead and paid the bill and then threatened to charge me with the bill. And 
um, unfortunately, after that, I would I refused to do any business with that customer, and I do not know the name of the customer right now. But even if I did, I'm not going to say because I'm not going to be a hateful guy about it. <clears throat> but you know, you try to screw me, and you know that's it. I'm not going to work for you no more. And that was one of the big crazy ones. Everything else was just minor stuff. Um, as far as breakdowns, I've had tire blowouts. I've had water pumps go out. I've had. I had a truck just shut off one time. It was a brand new truck. It just shut off. Um, one of the trucks that I drove once upon a time was a brand new um, International Pro Star. And I know they have them here in the game. This truck was brand new. This was the first year of them. And um, they gave me all a nice, pretty brand new one, all nice and shiny. Um, I drove it 150 miles in the air conditioner quit working. Um, I took it over to a shop, they fixed it, and after they fixed it, I drove 150 miles, the AC quit again. After that point, the, um, I'm just going to do a quick part, guys. After that repair job, um, the interior panels started falling off, and I tried to put them back on. So, a lot of the interior panels are now plastic, and they're not screwed in place. They're, um, they got the little, um, little clips and whatnot in them and those clips were broken breaking because it's plastic i mean what do you expect with plastic so yeah i've had some fun experiences i can't remember every single one of them guys i really can't so let's see how this load delivery looks all right well, over twenty-seven thousand dollars to go not even 300 miles just under 300 and actually it would have been a little bit less i think it was 284 miles was the trip but remember i missed my exit so uh pretty common happens so anyways guys i uh, hope you enjoyed the stories with that um you know there's probably more than i could probably talk about but i mean how many times do you want me to tell you about a bone tire or something like that there's a lot of them are small you know it's just things that happens on the road so, um, so yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope, uh, my stories have been interesting. I've been trying to, uh, keep them interesting and short and sweet at the same time. It's a, it's a lot of work to do, but, um, so yeah, guys, that's going to be a wrap on this video. I'm going to see if I can try to put another one together real quick. Um, we're just going to kind of see what we got going on for loads. So, um, I will see you guys in the next one.